I don't know when I told y'all this, but I do remember talking about this specific point in a prior video. That when it comes to the teams that we cover here on the channel, we talk about the Canadians, we talk about the Canucks, the Red Wings, the Kings, the Rangers, the Sabres, the Oilers, a few other teams as well. I really wanted to dedicate some time into putting Columbus into that rotation as well. Mostly because when it comes to Blue Jackets related topics, I feel like the entire Pierre-Luc Dubois trade saga of the entire 2020-ish era showed to me that there is a pretty marketable amount of substance for Columbus related content here on YouTube. And so when it comes to talking about these prospects in particular, I do think that even if you ignore what we had talked about when it comes to wanting to create more Columbus content, this pairing of prospects right here is just so gosh darn good that it's really difficult to ignore and try to take that spotlight away from these players. Today we're going over two prospects in the Columbus Blue Jackets system. One of them was drafted in the most recent NHL draft in 2022, and the other was a guy taken a few years earlier in 2018 as a seventh round pick. Now, both of these prospects have made names for themselves the past few years, but for different reasons. We're going to go over to the older one first and foremost, because when it comes to this player and his most recent string of play, his success has actually earned him a call up with the main Blue Jacket squad after playing Playing like an absolute beast in the Cleveland Monster system. Let's talk today about Trey Fix Wolonski, a 23 year old 5'7 forward, a right handed right wing guy who weighs 179 pounds. Now, Trey Fix Wolonski was drafted all the way back in the 2018 draft in the seventh round, 204th overall by the Blue Jackets. Now, it's easy to see why a guy like this would have been taken where he was in the entry draft. It was 2018, sure, he was a pretty good point per producer, but he also was an overage player who was eligible for the draft in 2017, but who had 54 points in 70 games in the process. Now, sure, that number isn't amazing, but it's not bad. It's just the fact that he's only 5'7 definitely put a lot of concern in the eyes of those who are selecting the draft picks, and so he went undrafted in his first year of eligibility. The season after, though, that's where he had his 89-point year, and the Blue Jackets liked him enough to use one of their last picks in the draft on him. The season after, he dominated the WHL, getting 100 points in 65 games played. He was one of the top point producers in the entire league, period. And if you take a look at some scouting reports back from the era, here's what was written about him in March 2019 by Frank Pellegrini. Fix Wolanski is one of the smallest players in the WHL, but the Oil Kings captain can do it all. He scores, makes plays, and even engages in the occasional fight. He's an above-average skater with an above-average skill set and a strong defensive game. Scoring points is a proven remedy to overcoming a lack of size, and Fix Wolanski has done exactly that this season. Through 58 games, he had 92 points. He went undrafted in the WHL and was never invited to a Canadian World Junior Selection Camp. Such snubs have likely motivated Fix Wolanski to raise his game to an elite level. He does not have much to improve on in the WHL. With that, he should join the Cleveland Monsters next year, but will need to sign a contract first. Now, he did sign the contract, and he did play with Cleveland, getting 26 points in 43 games played in his rookie year. Give it a few seasons after bouncing up and down, dealing with a few injuries, and playing a little bit with the main Columbus squad in 2021-2022, getting two points in six games there. Trey Fix Wolanski has gotten off to a really hot start this season, getting 22 points in 14 total games played. Now, that's good enough to be on pace for a 115-point season in the entire AHL. And he is number one in the league in overall points, or at least he was before Alex barre Boulay did his thing with the Syracuse Crunch. But this is where things get interesting, because of the 22 points that Trey Fix Wolanski has, 14 of those points came in his last four games. As a result, the guy got called up to the regular Blue Jackets. He's going to be replacing Liam Foody. And I mean, when a guy goes out there and scores, what is that, 14 divided by four at a three and a half point per game pace, it definitely starts a hype train up for this guy. The guy was at 8 points in 10 games, which is already good enough, like that's a good number for a guy in the AHL who is only 23 years old, but getting multi-point games like crazy and ending up with 14 points in 4 games, that is absolutely nuts, and there's a reason why Trey Fix was given this opportunity in the first place to play with the main Blue Jackets. 
Now, there is another prospect that I wanted to talk about, too. This is the guy in the thumbnail. This is the guy in the picture comparing him to other players that are of notice. It is recent 22 draftee in the third round, 96th overall by Columbus, Jordan Dume. Because when it comes to this guy and his overall production, man, oh man, has Dume shown off that he is more than probably what other NHL scouts valued him, especially in the 2022 draft. He's 18 years old, 5'9", 174, as another right handed right wing player. And last season, he had a pretty decent year, 109 points, 68 games played. He was taken in the third round, and this is what the Elite Prospect Scouting Report says. The Mooseheads winger anticipates the rotations of the puck and the opening of space in the offensive zone like it's second nature to him. He moves ahead of them and knows his next play before the puck has arrived in the stick. You'll even see the odd flash of manipulative ability to open up gaps in their coverage and passing or shooting lanes. Jordan Dume was an offensive machine, and 109 points definitely does solidify that. However, what if I told you that this guy's season in 22-23 has been even better? Because so far, in 21 games played, Jordan Dume has 19 goals and 29 assists for 48 total points on the year. He's on pace for 156 points. That is absolutely incredible, and he has had multiple six-point games. He had two six-point games in the span of like 10 days or whatever it was, where he was getting hat tricks and multiple assists at the time. And if you take a look at what Jordan Dumais' overall profile looks like in comparison to other QMJHL players, here's Scott Wheeler with the tweet for you from two days ago. Here are the highest-scoring U-20 QMJHL seasons in the last 20 years. Sidney Crosby had 168 points. Jordan Dumais is on pace for 163 points. He was a few days ago, now he's on pace for 156 but still, 156 points trumps the third overall guy, Alex Radulov, who had 152 points. And then you have Crosby again, and then Connor Garland twice in a row. If Jordan Dume can keep up his overall point production, it will be historic. And in fact, if you go over to the CHL as a whole, we like to talk about the individual leagues, I know that, but when it comes to the CHL in totality, he is tied with one none other than Connor Bedard for first overall in the CHL in points. It's Jordan Dume and Bedard at one and two, and then 12 points behind is the second place, or excuse me, the third place CHL guy. It's Connor McLennan from the Winnipeg Ice, or at least it was at this point in time when the tweet was posted by the undrafted. But either way, this is absolutely astounding. Taking a look at a guy who has produced so well and so much ever since getting drafted as a third round player. I think maybe you could have gone out there and expected a bit of an increase in production considering he had 100 plus points last year, but all the scouting reports seem to be super surprised with how well he's been able to produce. This is what Dauber says, he is a shifty offensive winger with good playmaking ability. A lack of size and strength could hold him back, but he has the skill to produce at the NHL level. And all of a sudden, when you take a look at Dume and Trey fix two guys that are sub 5'10", they're both right-handed, they're both right-wing, and they're both doing incredible things in their respective leagues and their teams, it makes things very interesting when you acknowledge where exactly the Columbus Blue Jackets are going to be getting their points from the next few years. Obviously, you know you've got Goudreau, Line, Johnson, Chinikov, Sillinger, all there that are probably going to be solidified top six forwards at some point in the future. But rounding out your second power play unit, for example, rounding out the middle six, rounding out scoring lines that can have some good defensive shutdown roles as well as some bite, while also providing a good offensive spark, Trey fix and Jordan Dumais look like guys that could definitely maybe help out in that respect. Even for Jordan Dumais, I mean, the guy is a third-round pick from last year, but already he's in the same territory as Sidney Crosby, Radulov, and Connor Garland. These guys were all pretty good NHL players, and top six guys in my opinion. So for Dumais, this definitely is a pretty good showcase of talent for him, and of course for Trey fix you love to see the 14 points in four games in the AHL because that is just unheard of for anybody, let alone players who are 23 years old and recovering from injuries after playing one full season in the league already. 
see. But talk in the comments either way all your thoughts about the Blue Jackets and their prospects, the guys in the system that are dominating the score sheet so much to the point that, I mean, we had to make a video about this. There are two of them on the chopping block, and they're so far up in the spotlight that one of them just caught called up, and the other is tied with Bedard for first in CHL points. Thoughts in the comments section below. I hope you enjoyed this British Rolls 99, and bye. <laughs>